Robots are able to do many amazing things just like we humans can. Even if the robot is smaller than a dog, it's more than enough to be able to get its job done. In the past, we cleaned our houses with soap, water, and some drag towels. Then we made cleaning part of our technology and made vacuum cleaners. But we're getting even further with technology to the point where we don't have to vacuum manually and just use a robot vacuum instead to do the house cleaning for you like the iRobot Roomba 880. The iRo iRobot Roomba can be used when you're not around the house and it could get the cleaning done for you. The iRobot Roomba can also give you time to spend on your family instead of cleaning the house and wasting time. The iRobot Roomba 880 is 350 millimeters in diameter and less than 90 millimeters high and costs around $700. The iRobot Roomba has sensors that find boundaries of your room and then move along in those near rows with that space. Not all robot vacuums have the same type of program. Some have a camera that faces your ceiling and uses the ceiling as a reference map for the room it's in. The Roomba was funded by Massachusetts of Technology Robotics in 1990. The iRobot Roomba can also detect edges and can avoid from falling in steep places like stairs. Uh, you can also set a timer and schedule on it. That, that way if you set the timer on, like for example 2 o'clock, the Roomba will start itself at that time and will begin to go around cleaning your house. It has some disadvantages like not being able to pick up big pieces of trash, but overall it's a good robot vacuum to use around the house. The benefits for the iRobot Roomba is 1. It can dock or put itself back to the base to recharge itself when it's almost out of power so that you don't have to pick it up and recharge it again and again. It does it for you. Second reason is if you have, a, if you have any type of animal that leaves hair or dirt behind on the floor, the Roomba can pick it up for you and and not have you waste time. Finally, the third reason is if you're single and you're the type of person that doesn't like to vacuum around the house, then the Roomba can do the job for you. Personal use robots. First to start out as a toy that almost everybody used as entertainment. Then people used it to clean their houses or even their pets in 2002. But it became so advanced that people are using it for medical reasons or for personal reasons. The purpose of our personal use robots are many things. They can feed your pets, clean them, clean your house, maybe even clean you one day. People can even make a cyborg type as a fun tool to them. But the specific robot that I am focusing on is a hybrid assistive limb. The hybrid assistive limb may sound more like a medical thing, but it can also be used for medical purposes, what I am focusing on personal use. It can help carry things from destination A to B without a hassle. Cybernet was a company that made HAL 3, they also made many other versions of the hybrid assistive limb called HAL 1 and HAL 2. The designer was one of the professors from Tsukuba University. Then Cyberdyne was a company that manufactured this film. Their company based their company off the Terminator, the movie Terminator, Cyberdyne. Cyberdyne is a company based in Japan. How or hybrid system though? That's perhaps the most advanced exoskeleton suit available on the market. At the price range of $40,000 and $90,000, with commercial work, of course. How 5 is used to support movements and to lift weights. The hybrid assistive limb is a mobile piece of technology that acts as another pair of legs. HAL has a height of 1.6 meters and weighs 23 kilograms. But at the same time, it's hard to use a hybrid assistive limb because the battery provides a range of 2 hours and 40 minutes where the user can lift this. The benefits of having this piece of advanced technology is to help you do things an average person can. Like if you're paralyzed, you can use it for medical reasons. But when, you're, when you use it around your household, something, when you carry something very heavy and you can't pick it up, it'll be able to do that for you. From when you move it around your household. In my opinion, how can be a very useful piece of technology that can be used anywhere, by anywhere I mean, in different fields, like medical purposes, military, and maybe even for your entertainment. Wow, really is incredible. So we saw, we saw in the presentation uh, a little while ago um, these guys walking around. Is it is it heavy? Really? You don't feel any weight. So approximately, how heavy are the? Okay. Others? So the total weight is approximately the one uh, the eleven kilograms. Right. However, hmm. every system has a soul, so the wearers operators don't feel the weight. Okay. I see. And uh, w and all of the weight are supported by the robot by itself. That's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible.
So we, we saw on the video on during your talk yes. um, some elderly gentlemen oh, who, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who couldn't walk. Who, yeah. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robotics and personal use started in 2002 when the iRobot company developed a robotic vacuum cleaner. The Institute for Personal Robots and Education then began teaching computing using personal robots in 2006. Stanford University began the personal robotics program in 2007. Most personal use robots focused on cleaning purpose until Milligro Human Tech introduced the first body massaging robot in 2012. The need for personal use robots is mostly for convenience for people. The robots perform daily functions on their own, allowing people to do other things that they during that time. The iRobot Scuba is basically a machine that will wash floors and return to its storage area by itself at a time selected by the owner. Technology used to include sensors to identify walls for in, in other areas that are not meant to be washed. It also uses a computer mapping system that basically draws a map of the room to be cleaned based on inputs from the owner and the sensors during a setup time. Run. Finally, the robot is driven by motors and gears based on the computer mapping completed and the wash function is completed by spraying tools, brushes, and a vacuum. The robot scuba weighs 8.3 pounds, is 14.4 inches in diameter, and 3.6 inches tall. The scuba costs between $400 and $500 and is intended to wash all hard, all hard floors including vinyl, tile, and wood. The iRobot scuba was designed in iRobot, which was started by a group of scientists from MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab. iRobot became famous for the first personal use robot, the Roomba Robotic Vacuum Cleaner. The scuba can use a variety of cleaning liquids, including an antibacterial one to remove germs. The robot first prepares floors by vacuuming loose debris. It sprays down the, some of the cleaning solution and scrubs the floor using the brushes. Finally, as it finishes passing over each spot, it vacuums up the dirty solution, leaving the floor nearly dry behind it. The scuba can clean an area of around 300 square feet in one cleaning cycle before it must be emptied, re emptied, refilled, and recharged. The benefit of iRobot Scuba is that it requires minimal effort from the owner. All the owner has to do after the initial step is fill it with the cleaning solution and press a couple of buttons. It is then ready to clean. Of course, they do, they do have emptied the dirty water after the cleaning cycle is completed. I do like this technology because I think that it lets people have more fun with their life and accomplish more things during the day because they are not stuck inside cleaning and scrubbing floors. I also think this technology will continue to progress, resulting in even greater convenience devices becoming ready for people to own, making their lives easier. Scuba from iRobot, the company that makes the Roomba. This is the Scuba 450. Here on this demonstration, it's cleaning up a floor that uh, had a bunch of gook on it, some old coffee, some Cheerios, some ketchup. And what's different about this Scuba is that it's completely redesigned from the last model that came out three years ago. This time around, there's a three-cycle cleaning process. Because let's be honest, sometimes things in the kitchen are kind of stuck on the tile. So on the first cycle, it'll go around, clean up all the dry debris like the Cheerios, and it'll also lay down a thin sheen of water. Or if you have the iRobot scuba solution, it'll also lay that down. And then the second time around, the scrub brush kicks in. And finally, it'll go through once again with a squeegee to make sure it picked up anything that it left behind. The total process should take about 20 minutes for about 150 square feet. It's really easy to pop off the tank. You just press the button, it comes off, and you can access the clean water compartment and empty out the dirty water compartment. If you need to clean the scrub brush, you can also pop that out easily too. Underneath you'll find a brush that cleans up dry debris. And there's also a scrub brush for really getting it clean. It spins at 600 RPM. And there's also a squeegee there for taking up all the rest of the dirty water. 
On the front of the scuba, you'll see a clean button that will light up to show you the cycle progress. There's also an information button that you can press where the scuba will talk to you. It'll let you know if something needs to be changed or if the water's low. And there's also a button that can set the size of the room so it knows to cover a large area or a small area. I'll clean a large room. To clean hard surface floors three times better than ever before and is proven to wash away up to 99.3% of common household bacteria. Scuba starts by sweeping up dirt and putting down a thin sheen of iRobot hard floor cleaner to soak into any stuck on messes, much like the way we soak dishes before washing them. As scuba comes around again, the scrubbing brush spins at more than 600 RPM to remove grime, while the squeegee vacuum suctions dirty water off of the floor. Unlike a mop, scuba never puts dirty water back down on your floors. It only uses fresh solution from start to finish ending with a final squeegee finish cycle, so all that's left is a clean floor. Scuba 450 suits just about any home and cleaning need, with two cleaning options to choose from. A full 40-minute cycle or a 20-minute cycle for smaller spaces. Scuba 450 makes scrubbing floors an easy thing to do. Just fill the robot and press clean. The proof is in the tank. When the robot is done cleaning and the tank has been emptied and rinsed, Place Scuba 450 on the dry dock charging and drying stand, available to be purchased as an accessory. Like our world-renowned Roomba vacuum cleaning robot, Scuba 450 uses iAdapt responsive navigation technology, our advanced system of software and sensors, to make multiple passes over every section of your floor, scrubbing up to 300 square feet before it needs refilling. With iAdapt, Scuba gets under and around furniture, following along walls, avoiding area rugs, carpets, stairs, and other drop-offs, and making sure your entire floor is clean. Scuba 450 tackles dirt and grime so you don't have to, giving you brilliantly clean hard floors every day, the easy way. Technology is important to our society and has impacted the world and our identities in our generation. There are robots that help people. Robots are sometimes used for personal use. They can help disabled students get the education they need. These robots allow students to participate in activities if they can't go places on their own. One area of the educational field is personal use. There are robots that can go to school for kids with illnesses. If the student can't attend school, he or she can still interact with others without actually being there. They can do this by setting up a video camera and the student can talk to people while the robot moves for them. These robots are very helpful. Technology works in many different ways. People can be able to do the things they can't by having these robots. Technology has evolved over time and can have positive effects on people. Personal use drones. The history of robotic technology has changed a lot and will continue to do so. Robotic technology also plays a really helpful role in our society because they help us do things that most humans can't do or need help with. The most helpful type of robotics is the personal use type because they can help people in need. My piece of personal robotic technology is drones and not the type that is used in the military because drones aren't always supposed to are always supposed to be used for war and or harming people. People use dr personal use drones can be used for serving, sending, or delivering items from long distance, filming from areas incapable to be reached by humans, and many more helpful and handy tasks. Drones are used a lot for filming or capturing, but they are also starting to be used for deliveries. Already big companies like FedEx and Amazon are counting down until they allow the drones to use standard U.S. airspace. The FAA is talking about allowing this to happen sometime this year, but the drones will not be allowed to fly 400 feet above ground and must be at least four to five miles away from the airport. Personal use drones are one of many very useful personal use drones and robots, but in my opinion, a drone can come in really handy and helpful. If you are trying to capture film, from capture or film something from high up and also, if you want something to be delivered using the skies, 
In my opinion, I really think that drones are really helpful and really easy to use for people who think it's not. Also, drones are also drones also drones are not expensive. They are something that can really help us in the upcoming future. Drones have been a fixture at CES for about three or four years now, and when they first arrived, the impressive thing was technology that made it easy for anyone to fly. Being able to fly your own drone is cool, but for them to really live up to their name, drones have to be able to do things on their own. We liked them a lot when they were flying cameras in the sky we could control, but at CES this year, most companies are convinced we'll like drones even more when they fly themselves. Everywhere you looked on the show floor this year, there were drones advertising what's been dubbed the follow me feature. Right now, the follow me is usually implemented with your phone, which is to say the phone has a GPS, the drone has a GPS, and it, they just talk to each other and it follows you based on the position of your phone. The follow me feature is great, but it also has some serious technical hurdles that most companies have not even come close to overcoming. We see that the flight areas where you can actually use a uh, follow me function are pretty limited. So you're looking at a desert scenario, maybe on the beach, but if you're skiing down a hill, you don't want to hit a chairlift or a tree or a power line. So we think that there's a lot more work that needs to be done into these systems before they're fully integrated. Taking things to the next level would mean giving drones the ability to see what's around them and respond safely to avoid accidents. Until this year, that was something many drone companies talked about, but none had really implemented. The most exciting news at CES this year in terms of drones is high-functioning sense and avoid technology that is no longer a fantasy. It's here, and it's getting better fast. The history of the caddy track changes every year. My robot, the caddy, caddy track, is a gold helper that doesn't have a long history as a robot. They don't have a long history because a guy named Chung Hang Lee recently invented it in the year of 2011. They have a personal use robots because they can be useful to people in need. The specifications of my robot, the Caddy Trek, costs about $1,400 in some places because it depends what the robot does or has. The robot is designed to help you in golf. The person who made the robot was by a guy in Massachusetts named Chung Hein Lee. He invented the caddy track to help golfers play better and help them do things that the golfers won't have time to do. In my opinion, the caddy track could be useful if you go golfing a lot because it can get useful while playing. The caddy track is used to move your golf equipment while walking or hitting the ball and also to put the balls where you want them to be. The caddy track can be useful when going golfing a lot because if you don't it would probably be a waste of money.